Hello viewers, uh, welcome back to the course on scientific computing using MATLAB. So now we will continue with the numerical differentiation. As we have discussed in the previous lecture about the first order derivative, so today we will continue from that. So this is lecture 53. So in the previous lecture we have discussed forward operator, backward operator and the central operator. So let us take example that how we can use this one. Now suppose I have the data, suppose I have some value of t and the value of u at t. So this value is given to me that it is 0, 0 0.25, 0 0.50. one point two five and one point five zero. So this is suppose my T zero, T one, T two, T three, T four, T five and T six. So the points the value of the function is given to me. So that is it is one zero point seven Eight four zero point six four nine zero point six one seven zero point seven one eight zero point nine nine zero and one point four eight two. So this is value given to me, and this is suppose this is my u zero, u one, u two u3, u4, u5 and u6. So 7, 7 nodal values are given. Now suppose I want to apply the forward operator. So forward operator I know that I want to find what is my u, the derivative I want to find what is my u dash at t i's. So this is I want to find using forward. So I know that for the forward u dash at t i it will be u at t i plus h minus u at t i divided by h. So it is a equispace data. So my h is 0 0.25. So at, I am finding my t i at this one. So I have to go one step forward. So in this case I will get the value here. So from here I can say that the u dash at t 0. This one I want to find. So this will be u1 minus u0 divided by h. So if I uh, solve this one, let us uh, find out the value. So this will be 0 0.784 minus 1 divided by h is 0.25. Similarly, I can define the next one. So this is my u dash as t0 then u dash at t1, u dash at t2, u dash at t3, t5. So I can go up to t5 only because I am using the values after that. So if I want to find out the derivative at u t6 that I cannot do with the help of this forward operator. So this one I can find out. So if I solve this one, this will be minus 0 0.216. Similarly, I can solve the next one, this will come minus 0 0.135. Then next is minus 0 0.032. The next is 0 0.101. 
जीरो पॉइंट टू सेवन टू एंड जीरो पॉइंट फोर नाइन सो दिस इज माई दिस वैल्यू नाउ द सेम थिंग आई कैन डिफाइन द यू डैश एट टी आई यूजिंग बैकवर्ड so in the if i use the backward then i know that i will apply this formula so for the backward it will be i will start from u dash t1 because u dash t1 means i am taking t1 minus and going back by h u at t1 u at t not by h so that is the backward so in this case i can go up to this so this will be u dash at t6 will be u at t6 minus u at t5 divided by h so now from here whatever the value i am taking so this will be same as this value so this is the same as this value and this last value will be same as this value so u dash t5 Will be same as u dash t six when I take the backward. So total number of six values we can find using the first order derivative. The same way I can define for central. So this is u dash at t i using central difference. So in the central difference, I know that I was taking u dash at t i. That is equal to u at t i plus one minus u at t i minus one u dash at t i divided by two h. so in this case i am going one step forward one step backward divided by 2h so if i want to find this value so i can take the value of u dash at t1 so this will be u 2 minus u 0 divided by 2h then i can take u dash t2 so it will be u 3 minus u 1 divided by 2h so i can go, go up to u dash t5 because it will be equal to u6 minus u4 by 2h and that's it so in this case when i was applying the forward method then i was able to take the six derivative the value of the function at six places the derivative with the backward also i have the six value but using the central values we have only five values so i don't know what is the value at u dash at t0 and u dash at t6 so whenever we have the data and we want to use our central defense operator to approximate the derivative then we are able to find the value of the derivative only at the interior nodals so these are the interior nodal values t1 t2 up to t5 at the boundary values at this place and this place we cannot approximate the value of the derivative using the central difference so if i want to calculate the value of the derivative at the initial point and the last point we may use the forward operator here and in the end i can use the backward operator here so that way we can approximate the derivative of the function for each value of the data point so this all things will be used when we solve the differential equation so in the solving the differential equation boundary loop problem or the initial loop problem we have to take care that whether we want to apply the forward operator backward operator or the central difference operator to approximate the derivative involved in the differential equation so this is the use of how we can approximate how you can uh, use that uh, different different type of difference operator now so this is we have done for the equispace derivatives equispace data now i want to define the derivation
with with unequal interval so in this case i have the x0 x1 x2 up to xn y0 y1 y2 up to yn and xi minus xi minus 1 is not constant okay so in this case i can define my hi is equal to xi plus 1 minus xi and this is a different so we have the data that is not equispaced now suppose i want to use the derivative so suppose my x0 is this and i take x1 and i take x minus 1 this is my x2 now my x0 suppose this is my h1 and this is my h2 okay so let's uh, write my x1 can be written as x0 plus h1 my x2 can be written as x0 plus h1 plus h2 now suppose i want to find the derivative of my function at this point with the help of suppose i want to take the forward operator so either using this one or this one so let us write what is the Taylor expansion for x0 plus h1. This can be written as f at x0 plus h1 f dash x0 plus h1 square by 2 factorial f double dash x0 h1 cube by 3 factorial f triple dash x0 and so on. So this is the equation number 1 and I am expanding with the help of Taylor expansion because I know the value of the function only at this point and this point. So that is why I am finding the value at x0 plus h1 with the help of Taylor expansion. So I can write here using Taylor's expansion. Now the same I can define f at x0 plus h1 plus h2. So this one is again fx0 plus h1 plus h2 f dash x0 plus h1 plus h2 square by 2 factorial x0 cube by 3 factorial x0 and so on. So that I take as the equation number 2. Now from here I if I want to find out the first order derivative. So the first order derivative the simplest form is that using equation so using equation 1 what I do I take this on the left hand side this is my value of f at x1 this is fx node and this h1 I can take common so from here I can write that f dash at x node can be written as f at x1 minus f at x node divided by h1 and then I will get the terms similarly minus h1 by 2 f second derivative xi where xi I can take between x0 to x1. The same way we have done as for the equispace data and from here I can say that this is of order h1. So this is I can say that in this case f dash x0 is approximately equal to fx1 minus fx0 divided by h1 and what is the h1 so this is h1 i can write as x1 minus x0 so that is my h1 plus the error term is the order of h1 so that is my the forward operator for 
unequal data. So this one we have defined. Now similarly I can define the higher order formula for first order derivative. So first order derivative you see that in this case I have used this one and I am able to get the, the derivative of the function at x naught with the order of accuracy with the order of h1. Now I want to increase the order of accuracy. So what I do I want to find the higher order formula for the first order derivative. So this I can write down. So we can obtain from equation 1 and 2 by eliminating f double dash x naught. So we can eliminate this one. How we can eliminate? f double dash x naught what I do that so I multiply this equation with h1 plus h2 square because this is there and I multiply this equation with h1 square and then I subtract. So I can write from here h1 multiply equation 1 minus h1 square multiply equation 2. So this one we can do on applying Now what I do? I will get from here h1 plus h2 square f at x0 plus h1. So this is f x1 minus h1 square this one I can take and that is I can write f x2 because this is x2. This one I can add as h1 plus h2 square minus h1 square and this one is equal to fx0. Now this one multiply by h1 plus so from here I can write h1 h1 plus h2 square minus h1 square into h1 plus h2 f dash x0. So this one I can write from here. Now this will be cancelled out because it will be h1 plus h2 square into h1 square and this will be h1 plus h2 square h1 square divided 2. So this will cancel out and from here I can write the next term. So the next term will be h1 cube into h1 plus h2 square minus h1 square h1 plus h2 cube. So this is I can write divided by 3 factorial. into f triple dash x naught. So this is the corresponding to triple dash and so on. So this one we can write on. <clears throat> now from here we are able to eliminate my second derivative of fx. Now from here I can write, so this one I can, can be written as, so le, let us uh, write this, so this will be can be written as my h1 plus h2 square, this is my f1 
I can write minus h1 square f2. Now I can take this expression on the left hand side. So, this will be equal to h1 plus h2 whole square minus h1 square f0. And now I will get all this expression on the right hand side. So, this is the terms we are going to get on the right hand side. I am taking this on the left. Now, what I do is that if you solve this one from here, I can write this as h1 into h1 plus h2. So, I can take h1 common and h1 plus h2 common. So, I will get inside I will get h1 plus h2 minus h1. So, this will I get. and this will cancel out into f dash x naught plus the same way I can take from here h 1 square into h 1 plus h 2 square by 3 factorial and inside I will get. So, I have taken h 1 square. So, I will get h 1 and this one I okay minus I have taken h 1 square. So, that will go away. So, it will be h 1 plus h 2 because only I will get h 1 plus h 2 into f triple dash x naught and so on. So, this one I can write from here. So, from here also this will cancel out. Now, from this now whatever the expression I get I will divide this by this factor. So, from here I will I can write that I can write from here h 1 plus h 2 square f 1 minus h 1 square f 2 minus h 1 plus h 2 square minus h 1 square f naught. Now, what I do I divide it by this factor. So, this will be h 1 h 2 h 2 and h 1 h 1 plus h 2. This one can be written as equal to f dash x naught plus and from here also I will get. So, that expression become. So, this will cancel out. So, it will be minus h 2 into h 1 square h 1 plus h 2 square by 3 factorial and I am dividing by this one. So, this will be h 1 h 2 h 1 plus h 2 and that will be x naught plus all other terms. So, all the terms will divide by this factor. Now, so from here if you see that this will cancel out. So, this factor will cancel over this one h 2 will cancel out and this will cancel out with this h. <coughs> so, from here I can write directly that my f dash at x naught can be written as now h 1 plus h 2 square f 1 minus h 1 square f 2 minus h 1 plus h 2 whole square minus h 1 square f 0 divided by h 1 h 2 into h 1 plus h 2. Now, from here I will get the terms plus. So, this will become h 1 plus h 2 into h 1 by 3 factorial that is 6 and then I can write this terms as xi where xi belongs to x 0 to x 2. So, this one I can take because all other terms will contain the higher order of these terms. So, that we can ignore and this one. So, from there this is the my expression for the 
the first order derivative that containing three points values, point value at f0, then f1 and at f2. So, this is of order h1 plus h2 into h1. Now, let us see. So, this is my equation number 3 because previous one has only two equations. So, I can have the value 3. Now, so this is of order this value. So, I can write that f dash x naught is of order h1 plus h2 h1 by 6 or 6 we can ignore. So, just this is of order that is it. Now, let us take if h1 and h2 that is equal to h. What will happen if the my data is equispaced? Then in that case what we will get? So, from equation number 3 we get f dash x naught. Now, this will be h 1 plus h and h square. So, this will be h square f 1 minus h square f 2 minus. So, this will be h and h 2 h square. So, this is two h. 2h square. This is also 2h square minus h square f 0 divided by now here it is h h. So, it is 2h. So, I can write this as a 2h into h square and the order becomes h h 2 h square. Now, I can take my terms common from here. So, I write my h square common. So, I can write from here this will be 4 f 1 minus f 2 and this will be 4 h square minus h square. So, that will be 3 h square. So, this is minus 3 f 0 divided by 2 h q. So, the, I will get this value because I have taken h square common and this one I will cancel out. So, from here I will get that this is equal to 4 f 1 minus f 2 minus 3 f 0 and divided by 2 h. So, I will get this value for the first order derivative and this is of order h square. So, in this case I am using the two values f 1 and f 2 to finding out this one. So, that expression becomes the very easy expression when the data is equispaced. Now, so in this case now we will find out what about the so, that will do in the next chapter. So, let me stop here. So, today we have discussed that how we can drive the first order derivative whenever we have the data which is not equispaced. So, in that case we get the expression using the Taylor's expansion and then we in the next lecture we will continue with how we can find the second order derivative. So, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks very much.